Hello and welcome to the second and last part of the Plasma Ball tutorial. In this video, we'll attract the plasma branches to several points using a global spatial layer, an external effect, and an effect backdrops. Let's start by creating a new empty effect that will serve as our plasma attractor upon contact with the ball. We'll name it Contact, then open it. We'll add a new layer, set its spawn count per seconds to 1, and enable infinite duration. Since we want the particles to be simple stationary attractors, we'll remove the physics evolver and the unnecessary script lines of the spawner script regarding size, color, and velocity. However, we'll need our particle to stay with the spawner when it moves, so we'll add a local space evolver. We'll now use a spatial layer to globally store our particle positions, so the plasma, branches, and the other effect are able to query those positions to be attracted to. Let's create a new spatial layer named Touch. Then, add a spatial insertion involver and set it to insert the particles into the touch spatial layer. The spatial layer touch will be queried by the plasma ball effect. So we must enable the global property up there. Now if another effect has a spatial layer set to global, that has the same name and properties, it will be merged with this one. So to make sure that we have exactly the same one in our plasma ball effect, we'll just copy the touch spatial layer, save and close this effect, and open the plasma ball effect from the first part of this tutorial, and pass the touch spatial layer copy. Now we are going to use it in the evolver script of the branch layer. The following script asks for the closest position that has been inserted inside the touch spatial layer within a 0.8 meter radius around the pause parent position. If no position is found, the function returns an infinite position. There is nothing to query in the spatial layer yet, since we need our contact effect and its spatial insertion evolver. To test our plasma ball and the contact effect, we are going to create a new effect backdrop and select our contact effect. And move it to the edge of the ball. Let's go back to the Evolver script. And now use the closest position found to attract the plasma branches to it. This script line will make the variable has contact be true if a position has been found. So if pause contact is not infinite and if the shape glass contains the font position. To sum up, has contact is true if a particle from the contact effect is inside the ball and less than 0.8 meters away from the plasma branch. Now we can use the select effect function to choose between two values depending on that condition. With these changes, if a contact is made, pause 1 and pause 2 will be attracted to the contact position. We'll now tweak the other values the same way to get a better effect when the plasma is attracted. Here, we'll sample the turbulence at pause contact so that all plasma branches attracted to pause contact have the same turbulence. Then select between the old turbulence and the new one if has contact is true. The attracted plasma branches now move together with the same turbulence. We'll use a sign on the length of the branch to dampen the turbulence on the sides. and decrease the turbulence's intensity by multiplying it by 5. And trick the turbulence sampling to fake a speedup. 
We are going to increasingly offset the sample position over time by multiplying the position by scene.time multiplied by 2. To finally tweak the color now. We'll create a color factor by selecting 1 or 10 if has contact. and multiply our RGB color by this factor. And voila! We just finished our plasma ball effect. Thanks to the spatial layers, you can now have any number of plasma attractors by spawning any number of contact effects by duplicating the effect backdrop here in the editor. This wraps up our part 2 plasma ball tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and tutorials. Thank you for watching.